Chris Newman here, and this is part two of me turning this character from a concept all the way to a finished rig like the one you see next to me. And um, in this one, I'm going to be doing the, the rough turns, figuring out some of the clothes and body style as they, as they travel around in this turn uh, before going on to inking and all that. And one thing that occurred to me as I'm uh, through this video, I tell quite a few stories about uh, working in this industry. And I thought it might be interesting for you since I've been in this industry for 20 years. If you have any questions about working in animation, uh, at, put them in the comments down below and I'll try and answer them as I'm doing the next video, which will be out in a few days. Anyway, enjoy. Okay, we're back and so you saw me go through the whole process of creating the clothes other than the outlines um, or not the lines, the shirt lines. And those I'm going to wait until I've roughed in all of the, uh, the turns. So I'm going to go through and, and rough the turns for the clothes. So I'm going to create a new layer. I'm actually going to move this all the way to the bottom. And I'm going to call this rough. I'm also going to create a new shader that I'm going to call rough. And I'm going to just go through now and step through. I'm going to turn on on the auto keying. So as I, as soon as I start drawing, it's going to create a new frame. So I have. I'll, just stepping through the keys, I have this set up with these turns as I showed in my other video. You get the, uh, the perspective shift uh, using the 3D as a guide. So I'm going to just start with something simple, get myself in the groove and just track this object. And one thing I can do too is I, in the other video I showed, I made, I made these cubes for, to show center lines. But the, the scarf, <clears throat> the knot on the scarf is a good guide for the center line. <clears throat> All right, so I have that roughly tracking and I don't need to draw the other side because I can actually duplicate and, and mirror those drawings over. And I can even set up in the rig that it automatically mirrors the rig when we switch over. Um, which doesn't really work if your character is asymmetrical. Like I wouldn't want her hair to be mirrored and then suddenly look like the same side. And I, I could do that. I could live with that in a lot of cases, but I don't want to do that here. So I don't really need to redraw the scarf or rough out the scarf or any of the other parts in the front view because I already have those. So... I'm just going to continue drawing these. And I got to make this feel like the way I drew it, not the way the 3D goes. I just want this rough guide for as I draw it. I'm not trying to figure it out as I'm inking. And so I know I changed the shape a bit of of the the hanging parts of the scarf so I want to make sure that I I reflect that in in these turns as I go Yeah, so you see that 
this this one is quite a bit flatter on the side than my initial drawing and I need to make sure that that feels consistent and some of these complex curves that you get here are not necessarily the kind of thing you would think about even drawing as you're quickly scribbling this together but one of the things that that I will cover a lot is that accuracy isn't necessarily appealing so I don't think I want to have that if you saw the let me hide this you can see that there's a bit of a complex curve to the 3d back there and I don't think I want to replicate that I want to have it be a cleaner line and it's a cheat and maybe it comes to back to bite me because as you see we come around maybe I can do it but just have it be a little bit more subtle So now I'm not getting any of this line past the knot. And these two hanging parts, you can't, they've kind of merged into one. There's a little, little tiny bit of that there. All right, so there's the rough for the scarf. Oh, wait, I didn't draw. I think I need to hide these uh, arms and hands because I can't see what I'm doing. So I want one thing that I did like from my turns here so if I go to you'll notice the scarf has a bit of a curl and I want to replicate that so it's not just flat stuck to the body now one thing I'll have to consider as I finish this up is what are the height of her arms and if I do have to have them go over the scarf, do I care? Um, it's something that I'll have to figure out. One thing I want to do is as the scarf comes around, or as the, the hanging part of the scarf, the ends of the tie come around, I want to give them a little bit more so they don't feel completely flat against the body. Normally with something like this, I would just redraw it. But for whatever reason, I'm not. And then I also want to see this end of the scarf going into the knot. All right, so now I'm gonna work on the breasts in this rough. Yeah, it's a challenging thing because it's a challenging shape to draw from all these different angles, um, it would be easier if I scaled the, the 3D version for my reference. But I'm gonna push myself to just draw it. Because it, it's an overall goal of mine 
to just it one of the reasons that I gravitated towards 3D which I imagine is like a lot of people who um, are using 3D is maybe your drawing skills aren't the best and I've been pushing myself to not accept that as an excuse so I've spent a lot of the last couple years pushing myself to not be satisfied with my current level of drawing skills so we actually got the boob coming out in front of the scarf here so now I can step through and make sure that the volume feels like it's maintaining and and feel like that the outline is in the right spot so as as I come around notice that I kept drawing the outline going up farther on this side but really as I come around I want that outline to be more favoring the outside a good start I think the the screen left one feels a little big at times like here it definitely feels a little big there it feels a little big I think I was following my the three D too much. All right, now I'm going to do the belt. Drawing a very clean oval like this is probably the hardest thing for me at these weird angles. And someone commented on my last video saying, why not just do the Tune Shaded? And the fact is, I don't really like the look of Tune Shaded 3D. I think it works good for some mechanical things, but a lot of times what Tune Shaded 3D looks like to me is just that it looks like a 3d object with some outlines on it um, so it doesn't feel it never feels like a drawing and I want factions to feel like drawings not 3d um, and it's not that the that uh, can't look good like look at the stuff that uh, that uh, Lightning Boy Studio is doing, and it looks great. Um, but that is that is their style that they're doing. I'm noticing here that the um, that the belt buckle's volume doesn't look consistent as I'm going through, and I, I cover this a little bit in the the previous video um, that you you could turn on onion skin and uh, it the problem with turning on onion skin is you don't look at it the same way Whereas if I'm stepping through these drawings, I'm seeing the shape jump 
over and over in I don't, uh, if I do onion skin, the tendency is to just try and take, to take that drawing and figure out where the lines go in between. And you're not really thinking about the shape of the object itself. You're thinking more about just trying to get those lines to line up. And in order to draw well, you have to be able to draw the volumes of the things. And relying on onion skinning um, too much messes with that. All right, I'm noticing that as I go from that drawing to this drawing, that the scarf is changing quite a bit. So I'm gonna get a little bit of the hint of that coming over. I don't know exactly what would be accurate, and I suppose I could model it and figure it out, but I don't don't want to. Just get on with this this phase. And I'll keep saying this over and over. I'm not looking for 3D perfection. Like I look at this 3D model and it drives me nuts because it looks so mechanical. And it has some appeal, but uh, it's definitely not the look I'm going for. The original version of Factions, which I've actually taken off of my channel, even though the I think the shorts are funny. And comment below. If you want me to turn them back on, I'll turn them back on. Um, I, I took them off my channel, but they, they had a very different look. They were... Uh, Everything was very square. Um, and I used to really like it, but I don't anymore. So there you go. That's just what just happens. Um, it's in that same vein of, of where I honestly don't know. I don't know how I liked some of the stuff that I made enough to post it. I've actually been taking all that stuff off my Instagram. Initially, I wanted to have, uh, I wanted them there as a record so I could see how how much I've progressed. And, you know, I'm realizing I don't really need to rough this belt. I think the, the actual belt is a good enough guide. Um, Better, better off spending my time roughing the uh, nose and the ears in because the nose has the same issue that the breasts do in that I got to figure out where the outline makes the most sense to go. So in looking at my original drawing she has a much flatter nose than the 3D and it's also I think overall smaller so as just really quickly draw this and you may have noticed this with the the breast but from the front view of the nose as I go around in this direction I'm going to take some of this side of the line away and keep that side that way it's not the exact same drawing it feels like there's a perspective change going on so the next drawing might look more like that. It will never go away completely. Like I, I could do it like that where it goes down to nothing on that side. But that's really not the way I've ever been drawing these. So a little bit less on top. 
on that side, a little bit more on top on that side. Got a little bit square there, but I can fix that, keep going. A little bit more on top. That might be as low as I go on the on the, the side facing us. But as we come around the corner, I want to start using that line to hint that the nose is protruding a bit. So I don't think I need to draw the eyes because I have those in pretty good rough. But maybe I want to explore their shape a bit. And in some cases, I have things like the complete profile of these characters don't really look good. Um, most of the time, I will probably, if I'm doing a profile, I'm going to cheat them slightly three-quarter towards camera, either here or here or some cheat in between um, because just that doesn't look appealing like you don't you don't see any of the eye you don't see any of the mouth and taking this flat sausage shape and drawing feminine lips on here just kind of looks weird to me but if I do it right here, it still kind of maintains that that feel without having to cross over the, the outline. And I may end up cheating the, the eyes um, from what the 3D is showing me. All right, so from here, I would go and start working on doing the outlines for each one of these steps. And I know I've been doing these tutorials kind of in, in a weird order, um, but if you go watch the video I posted a few weeks back um, on setting up a turn using drivers and stuff like that, you'll see where this is going. I am gonna cover it in this series of videos um, but I wanted to have those shorter, like quick, you get to see the, the, uh, you get to see the results quicker. Um, so you could use them as a reference video. Oh, how do I do this part? I can just watch that. I'm going to jump forward a couple of drawings because there's some interesting challenges here in, with the scarf and then also getting the smaller breast to look like they're coming around the corner and there's some stuff I have to figure out like whether I want to continue that body outline all the way through or do a little bit of a, a cheat where it doesn't quite show through and th those are some stuff I'll figure out as I'm inking Lost a little bit of volume there. Another big thing to figure out in, in all this is, is going to be tracking those um, the shirt lines. And there's a reason I drew the grease pencil going over the breast because like as you'll notice here the, I wanted the lines to feel like they go over that curve. Um, and even though I will merge the clothes all into a single layer at some point, I might keep the breasts separate because you know there, there'll be animation of them bouncing um, in the, the piece that I'm working on right now. She's coming down the stairs and the roughs that I've done, um, I'm indicating that there's some bounce to the breasts and having those be on a separate layer will, will make that easier. I think that's probably a good point to have this outline be it completely in front. 
One thing that I started doing on these characters before is always indicating a little bit of a shirt wrinkle in the back. this this little uh, curl up here a little bit different so now I gotta figure out I gotta track that wrinkle around although it might end up competing with the uh, with the shirt lines so I may have to get rid of them. I'm going to rough them in for now. So this complete straight back view, kind of like the, the complete side view, or even the, the complete front view, will probably end up being pretty rare to ever have on screen. Because most likely, as, as I covered in the other video, a lot of times, uh, this is something I encourage people to do a lot. A lot of times uh, in live action, you'll have what's called an over the shoulder shot. And the, the thing I encourage everyone to do is, is Go watch movies and draw stills from, from, from their frames. So if I have a character talking to another character, I might have a shot where you're looking over the shoulder of the person that our character is talking to. And you'll have them just slightly off of a front view. And... Uh, if you go watch something like Blade Runner 2049 or um, or Denis Villeneuve's uh, newer, ver uh, his version of Dune, you'll see this a lot. You have this shot and the, the image I have, the frame that I'm on right now is probably where I would have a character for a shot like that. Not this front view. Um, I would have it there. Maybe here, but that's starting to get a little bit to be a different type of composition. And in order for the reverse of that to not just feel like you're popping from one spot to another, you might cheat. So now I'm going to keep this character on that side of, of the frame, but now we're going to be looking over their shoulder. So instead of just putting him right back in the same position, I'm gonna make this, the reverse shot, be a, moving the camera over a little bit more. So in that case, it will be slightly more three quarter for that, for that character, more like this, but the reverse in this example. Uh, so, these are considerations you have to have as you're you're planning out your character, uh, how you're going to build your character. And, and frankly, it's one of the things that's been kind of paralyzing for me on proceeding. It's just like making sure that my rig is perfect to move forward. And I'm trying to get out of that mindset. Um, I just hate having to go back and redo a bunch of stuff. Because I, on the original Factions run, there was probably four or five times where I realized something wasn't working. But I'd already taken the idea that I currently was using and replicated it off of, or around or replicated it for about five characters. So I had to go rework all of those characters. Um, and you know what? That stuff just happens. And for each short, I there's a bit of me going, okay, I have to freeze technology. And that's however I made this is how I made it. And in the case of this now, because it's all drawn, I will just redraw it. I will hand draw it if I have to for the piece that whatever I did is not working for. Okay. So I'm going to continue doing this uh, just to get all these turns roughed in. 
the the scarf is something that I don't really want to be uh, perfectly symmetrical as as I do the turn. So I may not want to just copy the drawings. I may change my mind later and just copy the drawings and then mirror them, sort of like I did with the breast in the earlier part. Oh, see, there's a big position change with my wrinkles there. And it's something that you'll see better stepping through the frames than if it was the onion skin. You'll see that it's different in the onion skin, but you might not realize how wrong it is. And even though I'm roughing this in and I could just go straight to doing the outlines, the reason I, I will bother roughing it like this is it gives me a chance to explore some ideas in a sloppier way that then I can go solidify when I do the inks. I mean, it's the same way, you, the same reason you do roughs in general. And the other thing is, is I might find I might find something that I did with one of my drawings in the rough that I prefer and want to replicate that across the other drawings. And if I haven't gone through the trouble of doing that clean ink, uh, then it's not a big deal. I haven't lost as much time as if I had gone through all the trouble of doing those clean inks. But you'll notice in general I'm working and I'm concentrating on one thing at a time. Uh, sometimes I jump around depending upon my interest, you know, something catches my eye and I want to, to spend a little bit more time on that. Um, but in general, I will concentrate on one aspect at a time. It's like I noticed that the breast is starting to peek through on this side. Now this might be where I definitely start copying the drawings because like I said earlier, this is a, it's a complex shape. Um, that will be hard to get consistent, um, especially as as these drawings start connecting with the other ones. But as I've said many times, my my goal is to not get to perfection. I want it to feel hand drawn and I've even been tempted with with this series that I'm working on to hand draw the whole thing but the reality is I have a full-time gig I direct on a new Lego series from the supervising director. So having a lot of spare time for stuff like that, well, I just don't. Um, and I also have other things that I do consulting uh, with uh, productions just to help them make it uh, make sure that they're being efficient and stuff like that and helping them develop their pipeline. That's actually what I did for, for Arcane. I wasn't, I wasn't uh, really doing anything in a creative capacity. So I do that kind of work. So doing my own projects has been quite a bit of a luxury and 
frankly, I haven't had much motivation to do it lately. But for many reasons, I have wanted to get back into it, mainly because, I don't know, it's just more satisfying making your own stuff than making other people's stuff. Even when you really like the stuff you're making, if it's not yours, it's still not the same. And even, you know, like there are projects when you get to put a huge portion of yourself into them and the work can be pretty satisfying, but it's still not your work. Um, a good example of that is I worked on Planet Sheen. The show was uh, was being done by a studio in Canada. I mean, most of the work or the the pre production was all being done um, here in California at Omation, but the show was very behind and I got called in to take over the show and fix it. And I had a, a degree of autonomy on that show that will probably never happen again, even on my own, even if I got uh, my own show greenlit. I probably won't have that level of of it all being up to me um, that I had on that show. And it's not a good show. <laughs> that, that's the funny thing. It, it grew on me, but it's not a great show. And, uh, but it was very satisfying to work. I got to voice direct for the first time. I got to be in a significant amount of creative control over the boards. I mean, we did have directors and we had our supervising director, um, Florian Wagner, um, who at the time worked at Bardell. I think he's at Rainmaker now. Um, he, he was the on the ground director for it and the two of us got to work uh, together on that and turn the show around. Um, I did quite a bit of writing. We had a writer who's a fine writer. He, uh, um, but he was in the, the middle of working on another show and Planet Sheen wasn't his primary gig. And so a lot of times there was stuff that just you know, it kind of fell through the cracks and I had to fix a lot of things. And, you know, when stuff wasn't, um, oops, looks like I'm drawing the front view again. Got some, uh, volume issues here, but yeah, I even got, I even ended up being, you know, working with, the composer to uh, to shape the music, um, and several of those people I'm still friends with today. Mike Tavera, who is the composer, um, and Florian. I'm still friends with all these people. All of that is to say that I wanted to get I want to get back to that level of creative control on something and factions is that for me in many ways it's it's something that although i've had interest from studios in it it's it's something that's kind of hard it's a hard buy-in for people and the way this industry works 
uh, factions as a spy show. And frequently, this industry doesn't like to do things that exist in other places. Even though in live action, um, you if you go pitch a show about a doctor who doesn't follow the rules, even though there's 50 of those, um, they seem to green light more of them. But in animation, they will say, there's already a spy show. And uh, there, there's already an animated spy show, which is Archer. And inevitably, uh, every time I've pitched or me and my friend Mike Ray, who helped me develop the current version of Factions, um, uh, every time we've been in a pitch, someone will mention Archer. And I have answers for why it's not the same at all, um, but it always comes up. And, you know, that's just the nature of the industry. So I want to do this show in a particular way. And I know I can do that if I do it myself. All right. One of the other things that I want to get in this rough are the ears. Because I have a, I always have a challenge drawing the ears in the, in the correct perspective. And some of that will likely be because sometimes I just want to cheat it. As I keep saying, it's the most important thing is the appeal of the drawing, not the accuracy of it in the 3D space. For instance, as I get into these side views, I tend to cheat, even though the ears are flat, like just sticking straight out. As I get into these side views, I tend to cheat them to be slightly backwards until it crosses the other line. And the reason is, is it just doesn't look good to have just this shape as your the side view of the ear. The original version of Factions, everything was very square. I think I said that earlier. But even as I translated into these more rounded drawings, I kept the nose very square. And it wasn't until about, um, I don't know, a year and a half ago that I started drawing the nose round. And I would always, just as I was sketching, really quickly, I would frequently draw the nose as an oval like that, just because it was faster than sitting there going like this. Um, and at one point I just went, oh, I like that better. But I've kept the ears square. Again, this was probably something that I will just duplicate and mirror rather than draw each in individual one. Um, but then again, I may not. I'll, sometimes these decisions come down purely to whether I'm bored or not with what I'm doing. All right, I'm gonna call this video done. In the next one, I will ink up all of these and color it in and show more of that. Thank you.